Hello, welcome to Properly Freelance. I'm Jenny Elborn, and today I am talking with Dr. Amy Mallet about wearing many hats. Hello, Dr. Amy Mallet. I'm going to call you Dr. Amy Mallet throughout the podcast because I'm you. very excited that it makes this is you feel name. really important. So you've been a doctor for how long now? Um, since January, yes, but I'm not. I, I can't fix your um, sore knee or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a doctor of philosophy. So this this hopefully will be going out around January, February. So you'll have been a doctor for about a year. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, we're expecting lots of expert doctory thoughts from you. Um, would you like to just say a bit about what you do as a freelancer and maybe uh, your freelance kind of journey to this point in your career? Well, I sat down and I, I thought, what do I do? <laughs> All I can tell you is my CV is a mess. Um, I started to write a list of the things that I've done as a freelancer, um, but it probably makes more sense to, to go from the beginning. So my, um, I'm a musician, um, first and foremost. Which and, is kind of how we know each other. Yeah. And um, my career really started as a teacher in um, FE. So I worked in lots of FE sort of um, institutions teaching music music technology and performing arts um, and for several different reasons one of which um, that I was starting a PhD um, and I had a young son who was um, starting school um, working the kind of nine to five etc etc um, pattern of being a teacher was not working for me so I started to look for other work um, and um, found work in here's my bullet points my different things <laughs> there's a list um, coming up there might be quite a lot of lists there's today. a list coming I've up got some lists <laughs> yeah so um, I have as a freelancer made money from um, workshop leading writing music and lyrics um, qualification writing uh, quality assurance within education examining moderating um, doing research, presenting at conferences, um, sound design, curriculum design, and then various kind of teaching things um, from literally from early years preschool children right the way through to master's students. I thought you were going to say right the way through to people in their 90s, well, yes. which has come up in Definitely, yeah, yeah that as well, as well in, a, in a kind of workshop context. All ages and all levels of experience you've yeah. managed to apply your teaching skills to. That's really impressive. And it might just sound like, um, you know, we're just here to show off about a great long list of all these different things we've done. But actually, that demonstrates really well what I wanted to talk to you about, which was uh, the topic of wearing many hats. Many, many, many hats. Oh, so many hats. I feel like we could be doing some kind of hat parade with um, all the hats that we have to wear as freelancers. So the reason that I thought you would be a good person to discuss this with is because I am aware of all those many different things that you have done and that you do do at the moment as well. And you demonstrated this. I think it kind of works on quite a lot of different levels. Mm -hmm. So you've got a kind of portfolio career going on. Um, and also you are often wearing many hats within the same project that you're working on. Yeah. You demonstrated this to me quite recently. So Amy and I work together because the community theatre company, which I run, Unseen Suffolk, has a musical element to it. And Amy has been our musical director and composer for the last four, four years. years. Four yeah. years, is that right? And uh, this year... Well, I, just a few weeks ago, in fact, um, at the time of recording this, Amy was uh, on stage as our musical director. But I've written a little list of the hats that I thought you were wearing that day. Oh, just in one those, day. For those, no, just in those two hours <laughs> okay. of being on stage. So you were obviously the composer, musical director, pianist and conductor, which was kind of what you signed up for. Yeah. Ish. But seeing as you were the only um, person on stage who had a script... And you were also kind of near the side so you could reach things easily. And you were the only sighted person on stage. You also ended up being a prompt, yep. a lighting operator at that time where oh, I yeah. said, you're near this switch, yeah, so you yeah. have to turn this off. Um, and I've this, there's something on this list which I've called the helping hand. And I'm referring to <laughs> the times when, with the best will in the world, our visually impaired actors don't always manage to find the right spot on the stage. And occasionally one of them would veer a little bit 
too close to you and Amy would just put out her helping hand <laughs> to let them know that um, they were going to walk into the piano and uh, um, help them to safety. So, yeah, you were wearing quite a lot of hats, even just in that moment of being on stage. It was quite stressful, yes. Yeah, um, I, I need to do a little public thank you. Oh, for, thank for, you for doing that. <laughs> I mean, I was wearing a lot of hats at the you same were, time, or else I were. would have tried to take some of those hats off of you. But I was kind of weighed down by my own hats. So I was, at that time, uh, the director. I was operating the sound for the show. I was also producing the show. I was also the... I'm calling it front of house liaison because there yeah. was a front of house manager, but essentially I didn't trust them. No. So I was trying to do their job <laughs> for them. Uh, I was doing a bit of counselling for various people yeah. here, there and everywhere. I was doing a lot of admin. I was trying to do make sure that we had the evaluation for the project uh, kind yeah. of in place all so that feedback. we were collecting all of our feedback, yeah. et cetera. Um, yeah, so I was doing quite a lot of things as well. And I, by by highlighting all of this, I don't mean to in any way um, seem ungrateful for the amazing team that we work with in that project because we do have a brilliant we team. We do, we have an amazing team. Of, of mostly volunteers actually yeah. around us. Yeah. Yet still, with the kind of work that we do, we end up taking on so many different tasks all at once. Well, you, you just have to really to get things yeah. done and it's a question of, do I wait for someone else to see this needs doing or do I just do it myself? Because sometimes it's easier just to yeah. get it done, isn't it? Yeah. I, well, I had a bit of a reflection on it and there were certain, some elements of that project where I felt that, you know, if I did something similar again, I really should, for example, get somebody else to manage the sort of front of house and audience element of it because mm. I felt that I couldn't be wholly present in my directing role because I was worrying about what was going on with the audience. However, yeah. throughout the rest of the year, I feel that I have to take on all of those roles. So sort of producing, directing, you know, doing all sorts of different types of preparatory work, marketing, etc. Because we're working with such small budgets and there's probably a few hundred pounds in the pot for each of those things. Yeah. So if I was to delegate all those things to different people and give them a few hundred pounds each, I would be left with so little that I wouldn't be able to justify me doing that instead of just getting a full-time job. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So, so through the year, I just have to. And I've I don't had know really similar similar. experiences doing, you know, community-based projects, basically. It's a question of, do you spend the money on that or do you just make do and um, have a bit more money to spend on other things? Um in a similar way, I've, I've actually found myself making costumes, mm -hmm. um, you know, with a sewing machine, <laughs> making um, props, painting stuff, you know, um, making sound effects, all sorts of things, um, just because, you know, because I can and it's easier and sometimes quicker to get stuff done yeah. yourself. Than yeah, it's that, I think that's that kind of learning point and sort of critical moment isn't it where you have to go do I just do this because I can or are there things that I can do but there might be a really good reason why I don't want to wear those all those hats all at once because it's just too many hats on my head and then there is that whole the show must go on as well and you've had this situation as well haven't you where we both have had a performer drop out right at the last minute oh, and we God, both yeah. have had to step in and actually perform yeah at the last minute yeah I found that an interesting one when I did that because I just forgot all the other hats I just went do you know what I cannot wear this hat as well as all the yep. others I just have to focus on this um I think in the way that's a more clear cut what your priority suddenly becomes and everyone around you becomes more sympathetic yeah whereas when you're doing lots of jobs that maybe it's less clear to other people what those jobs are, it's harder for them to understand quite why you're so stressed. Oh, absolutely, or... yeah. yeah. But then there yeah. are, I always find there are other key members of the production team who are worth their weight in gold and you just, you know, um, that's one of the brilliant things about doing what we do, I think, is working with so many amazing people. And, yeah. Um, yeah, so you're one of my amazing people and I know that I can give you an extra job to do which for whatever reason you're in the best position to do even though that might be going to stress you out in the moment but that's it we all have those other people don't we yeah you have to be able to kind of turn to and go 
oh, please, can you do this? And I think also um, it's one of the brilliant things about being a freelancer is you just become, you become really resilient. You become, you know, not maybe not a master of things, but, you know, jack of all trades. You, you, you know, you really can turn your hand to anything. You're not afraid mm. of problems when they arise. You just, you learn to make do. You learn to expect the unexpected yeah um and and adapt to whatever gets thrown at you which yeah. i think you know they're good life skills to have yeah. aren't they yeah yeah absolutely so do you find that it's difficult to switch between roles when when cuz you've got a very interest i'd like to know what the shape of your week is actually <laughs> like do you have a typical week and are you constantly switching between um, things it's not as bad um, at the moment, as it has been, say, for example, about a year ago, I remember being really flustered and sitting down and realising that I had technically nine different jobs. So I was carrying out nine different wow. roles for different organisations or yeah. I had nine different functions. I had all the emails and the admin that went with nine different things. Um, some of which I had to take on more responsibility for than others. Yeah. Um, so, you know, different email accounts, <laughs> different yeah. um, different ways of invoicing, different ways of getting paid. Um, that's one of the most stressful things, I think, mm. is keeping track of all of that. Yeah, because everything comes with admin, doesn't it? Yeah. What it even like some of the work that I do in theory is just this many hours, mm. but if you want to do that job well it will always have some admin, even if it's like, could you read this email before those hours start, just yeah. so that you're briefed on what we're going to be doing. Yeah. And if you, yeah, the more of them you have, the more they spill out. I've spent a lot of my working life doing maybe two or three roles at a time. And one of the things that I've kind of concluded from that is that I no longer aim for my working week to add up to, say, 40 hours, because every job spills over by, you know, anything up to... 20%, oh, 50%, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I'd rather that I'm aiming for 30 hours and I might end up doing it all within 40. Yeah. But you just can't, yeah, if you've got nine different jobs and they're each half a day a week, you're probably actually working more than full time. Oh, yeah. Definitely, yeah. And yeah. also, you don't have a, um, a set working pattern like other people do their nine to five or you know, 8.30 to 5.30, whatever. And and that can be confusing as well because quite often you'll work a weekend and then you're like, what day of the week is it? I can't, yeah. you know, or you'll, do, you'll work I an evening. I today, and yeah. Didn't know what day it was. I find so if I work I at a weekend, that it throws me out during yeah. the week and I yeah. Yeah, don't know where, I'm, where I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a weekend project at the moment and I am trying to be quite good and take you know a day off in lieu of that mm. weekend day but I can't remember if I took it last week or if I'm going to take it next <laughs> week so I just sort of yeah it really screws up what you do do you what do you kind of block out time for because some of it's admin I was just going to ask you it? that no well that's what you're supposed to do aren't you yeah. you're supposed to put it in your diary admin yeah. for x but and what you do it. I mean I try I do try to do that I was trying to do that yesterday really kind of I was having a bit of a I don't know why but yesterday I was feeling very stressed about lots of things even though I didn't have a ridiculous workload I was just feeling like everything I had to do was very bitty and I think it was that idea of like oh I've got like 12 different things and they're all I can't work out which one's a priority and I can't yeah. work out how to spend my time so I tried to do that block some time out for different things and I blocked out some time in the middle of the day when I was going to be going off for a swim and not working um, and of course what happened was the first thing that I wanted to do in the morning involved trying to phone some people to have some conversations um, and they didn't pick up so I left them messages and then literally as I shut my computer to go off to the swimming pool my phone rang and it was yeah. the person who I'd yeah you know tried to phone at quarter to nine in the morning um and I didn't want to miss that call so I'd have that conversation with them so it's yeah it's really hard to do the time blocking thing even with the best will in the world it doesn't always happen it is and I also find that sometimes the things that are earning you the least money are you know eating the most into your time yes. and that's absolutely that's you know that's the age-old problem of freelancing isn't it do you say yes to work do you say no to work if you turn work down does that mean it doesn't come to you next time you know do you take on the lower paid stuff just so that you can do a bit of the better paid stuff yeah. it's um it's just this 
it's like a moral dilemma all the time and it used, yeah. it used to really stress me out um mm. the whole um how am I going to make it to Christmas you know how much yeah. money have I yeah. got um and then I suppose the longer you do it the more you relax in that you know that the work will come you just mm. don't know when something will happen yeah <laughs> I mean do you do you like the variety of wearing many hats do you enjoy that yeah or would you rather just be wearing one if, there's, if you could in an ideal world there's several things that I really like I really like um being able to collaborate with people um it sounds a bit of um it, it sounds like I'm sort of at odds with this but because as a freelancer you're kind of working on your own but mm. everything I do I'm working with really great people and I'm choosing to work with them and I'm choosing to work with and collaborate and each of those collaborations is different and mm. you you do get to meet and work with some brilliant people um I love the autonomy of being my own boss mm. you know um you if you're working for somebody else you can't always choose who you work with or who you work for um and you can if you're freelancing in a way because yeah. you can try something and if you don't like it you don't do it next time yeah yeah um I love the creative freedom. I love the fact that you have, in a way, you've kind of built up a reputation. And um, if you're asked back again, then you know you did something right in the first place. And that's a nice recognition. Um, and I do love the variety as well. Mm. I think it's, it's, it depends. I think you have to be careful of the balance of the type of work you're doing. Because in our field, a lot of what we do takes up a lot of energy. Yeah. And if you're doing too much of that high energy um, workshop leading or, um, you know, lots of really interactive stuff, it can take a lot from you and you don't realise at the time mm. and you don't realise until you burn out. So yeah. you, you have to be kind of well, mindful this is, of this that. This is kind of, for me, one of the benefits of having been forced to broaden my skill set and do different things. Mm. I've kind of done it to make ends meet. But then I've realised exactly what you're just saying, which is that you burn out really quickly from doing stuff which where kind of you're the end point and you've got to hold that space and yeah. you're in charge of it. So I actually really like the fact that I fill some of the gaps between that work with stuff which is completely different to that. Yeah. Even to the point where, you know, one of the things that I have to do to make my projects happen is I have to do the bookkeeping yeah but I bloody love sitting down with my excel spreadsheet you love a spreadsheet <laughs> I do and I, I really like just when I have when I get up and I think oh actually I've just got to pay invoices this morning and yeah. then see if the books balance I would hate it if I had to do that all week yeah you know I know people whose job that is and I couldn't think of anything worse yeah but you know I do it every couple of weeks for about three hours and I you know I really quite like that time no one bothers me you know numbers don't lie you just kind yeah. of get down with your spreadsheet so even that kind of ends up having its nice side to it yeah just because it gives you some some variety and I think also you have to be brave as well sometimes you have to blag a bit you have to say yeah I can do that and then think oh I don't know if I can yeah. <laughs> what have I done yeah yeah so and I think take I've, on stuff yeah I've talked about that with almost everyone that I've spoken with so far because it sort of rears its head in how, however you approach mm. freelancing this the kind of fact that we're all kind of flapping about make, pretending we can do things that we don't actually know how to do has has come up with almost everyone but I, yeah in relation to this topic one of the things that interests me about that is that sometimes the things that we have to say we can do or you know take responsibility for are quite um quite sort of scary sounding things so for example in order to make some of my projects happen that I've been kind of spearheading myself I have had to put my name on quite a lot of policies which have got quite a lot of scary long sentences mm. and words in them yeah so I'm thinking about things like health and safety policies safeguarding policies um like human resources type stuff I have very little qualification in these things and you know I have taught myself it along the way mm. and I wouldn't put my name to something which I didn't feel that I had looked into and to the best of my knowledge was right but it is quite 
scary sometimes, the stuff that you have to... It is quite daunting. But, you know, someone's got to put their name down, oh, this isn't going to happen. Yeah. And if you're the one who's said, I want to make this happen, no one else is going to put their name down. No. <laughs> have you have you had that kind of experience? With... Well, I, I do feel there's a level of responsibility because we both work with, with people with disabilities or health issues. Mm. And... Um, I it's about weighing up what is just common sense and mm. um and you know not thinking doom and gloom ah what might happen if all the time and being anxious about it um but that that does worry me especially when I've been working in for example spaces that are not appropriate mm. um earlier this year um I was running some workshops for a charity who who um I mean, it's really admirable what they do. They bring arts, exhibitions and workshops into disused spaces, usually office spaces and that kind of thing. But there's also the side that, you know, these spaces, there's a reason why they're not being used. (laughs) And (laughs) the fact that they're not being used means they're a bit neglected Mm. and not necessarily appropriate. And then you're bringing, you know, people with specific difficulties into these spaces. Mm. And, and you are responsible for them. And that, you are responsible you? for yeah. them. And you are responsible if they, you know, we were on the fifth floor of, a, you know, an office block where the escalators didn't work and the lifts were just failing one by one. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I was thinking, at what point do I say, I'm sorry, this is not going to run yeah. anymore? Because... Have, you ever, have you ever pulled something for a, an issue like that? Um... I was. I would have done had the final lift broken. I would have yeah. pulled out completely. I, there, I cancelled a bunch of workshops um, in a job that I was working in a few years ago um, because of a kind of risk assessment type situation mm. um, where my name was on the policy, and I just felt that partly it was because I wasn't actually physically at those workshops, so there was nothing that I would physically be able to do to yeah. prevent those risks and it was it was really difficult because I'd walked into a position although it was a I was self-employed I had walked into a position where I was being asked to put my name onto policies that well the po- I was I was responsible for the policies but the policies were being I was being asked to apply the policies to an a, an existing setup of workshops that were already running yeah and you know you take all the advice that there is out there to write your policies and then you go in and go actually this this isn't safe and there's no point us there's no point writing this policy if you then just turn a blind eye to implementing it and at the end so in a way well there you go that's another hat that's a health and safety hat yeah exactly and in a way the fact that that happened I think you know does it is it's like you're saying we do have responsibilities and it is good that we're pushed to think all of these things through because in that situation I just went do you know what I don't think this is safe no I'm not letting it happen and I'm not sure that I would have felt so strongly about it if it hadn't been my name on the policy Mm. but it yeah you do kind of I think you have to be careful especially if you're in a self-employed role where maybe you are in a sense trying to do something to please somebody else as opposed to just doing it for yourself because there's all sorts of different pressures on you um and I don't, I don't really understand what the different protect, what the difference in protection might be um, if my name's on a policy like that when I'm self-employed versus if I was employed. Maybe it doesn't make much difference. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something that you know, if it's keeping you awake at night, you just have to. Yeah, it, I, I think yeah, the, it, there is a lot of kind of if it feels wrong, then mm. um, go with your gut. Yeah. Yeah. But again, like you say, you don't want to not be asked to do that piece of work again next time because you were the difficult one that <laughs> complained yeah. the whole time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think I kind of fluctuate between kind of waking up in the night and going, oh my God, this is ridiculous. Like my name's on so many things. Like, I can't take all these responsibilities. Mm. And that might be when I've, you know, seen something that is a bit risky or had a conversation with somebody or seen something in the news, particularly, you know, some sort of like big scandal. Yeah. Um, and then I'll fluctuate from that right through to oh it's fine like there's so much red tape yeah. like you know you must you can't worry about these things and I I kind of do think that nothing you know nothing would ever get done if we were all you know absolutely in this health and safety culture yeah, kind of yeah, thing yeah exactly or just yeah just all the kind of policy writing yeah. stuff that that comes with these jobs really um, I've got a little list of all the different roles 
well, some of the different roles that I have taken in order to make some of my work projects happen. And you, I don't know if you've got more things. I might do. I've got some bullet kind. points as well. Yeah. <laughs> Shall I read my list out? Go on then. So I reckon at the this is just things I've done this week, really, or yep. this month. Um, I've been a printer engineer, a counsellor, a courier. I am accounts payable. I'm a web designer. I'm an HR manager, a strategist, a bookkeeper, a sales executive, a legal department, a policy department, a research department, and customer services. And then I'm also actually a theatre director, an audio describer, and an access worker. But those are just in brackets at the bottom. <laughs> I know. Because basically these are all the things yeah. that you're doing in order to do the thing that you wanted to do yeah. in the first place. Yeah, the whole, uh, well, uh, uh, yeah, and I um, I write some music. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Sometimes you forget, don't you, what yeah. the thing was that you set out to do. Well, I've got some more things. I've got um, tea maker. Because oh, yeah. tea making is very important. Yeah. Um, I've got crunching leaves to make sound effects. Yeah. 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 Um, what else have I got that's, that's different? Um, video editing. Oh. I, there's this, all oh, this, that this takes whole. Forever, doesn't it, when you say I'll just do a bit of video editing? <laughs> yeah, but there's this whole set of skills, like you say, like web, mm. website editing or building, whatever. If you can do these things, it builds, you know, it you can get work from it so mm. you've got to be able to and this is really important as well you have to be able to showcase what you do and you yes. have to record what you do and keep evidence of what you do and I didn't for yeah. a long long time and then realized right. that you know I you know I was literally forgetting some of the things I'd done mm. you know and oh oh yeah I did that project didn't I and yeah. I've got nothing to show for it yeah. and and if you worked in a larger organization there would be someone whose job it was to document what you were doing yeah, because absolutely. it has marketing value, doesn't it? Yeah, so if you can, there's all these skills that if you, as a freelancer, if you can do them, um, that help you along the way and mm. help you gather momentum, help you get future work. Mm. And um, it can be quite basic what you're doing, like, you know, video editing. I could yeah. just do it on iMovie or whatever. It doesn't have to be super top of the range in order to serve quite a good purpose I've actually got an app on my phone now which is called splice and oh, it's yeah. video editing on an iPhone mm. and I've used it for a couple of things where I've just filmed something literally on the day and then you so you film it on your phone you import the clips into splice and I've just sat on the train and I've made a video montage of whatever I did that day yep. for social media and, you know, it that's use of time that I just wouldn't be really using otherwise. Yeah. Um, and it's not high quality, but I think sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that serves a purpose. Yeah. If it's just going on social media and probably no one's going to see it after another couple of weeks. Then Well, I yeah, I, can, I suppose we could add a documentary maker hat yes. onto my list as well, because I remember doing... I'd, I'd, I did a community... Well, we called it a performance installation within a museum, um, which involved uh, dance, drama, film, physical theatre, mm. all a promenade, promenade style within the museum. But um, we didn't, we weren't successful getting grant funding for it. So everybody that did, did that was involved did it for nothing. Mm. And on the day of the performances, I just thought, oh, I haven't got anyone to document this, so I'll get my camera. Mm. <laughs> and I went round and videoed different bits, interviewed people, um, put a little documentary of it together. And the other um, artists that were involved in the project, when I showed them, said, when did you do that? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't notice you doing that. <laughs> they didn't even notice me interviewing people and, you know. Um, but had we not done that, and I look back at that, and that, it's a really nice, you know, it's not, very slick but mm. it's a nice little record of it? what we did and it yeah. and it encapsulates the project yeah. um but had I not done it no one would have done it and no one would know that it project even happened so I can't believe we didn't neither of us had fundraiser on our list oh yeah we should totally have that as we both had lovely funding news I this reckon week. I reckon <laughs> arts council funding forms I, I reckon they're more difficult than doing a PhD really having done you both should now. Know. wow but you've I had a really success, do, which is great. I have yesterday, yeah. And you've had a success Hooray! too. So we are, yeah. But yeah, that's a hat that I don't know. Like, so everyone's wearing it, aren't they? Like, almost everyone in the creative industries is wearing the the fundraising hat because, and you have to do that before you really even 
start the work if it you know if it relies on on funding yeah you almost never get paid for it well like, this is what i was saying this funding application is my third arts council funding application that i've got that's been successful and it's the first one where i've actually included a fee for myself and my services because all the other ones i've donated everything to the project in kind that i've done just to make up the um you know the, the difference in the match funding i'm so pleased for you that's been a long time coming and but yeah. it's crazy isn't it it's quite how qualified and experienced do you have to be <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to, before you're allowed to pay yourself or maybe it's we just don't value ourselves enough maybe that's sometimes what it is. i wonder about that yeah i'm doing an episode soon all about how we value ourselves ah. and how we price ourselves and yeah because there's a lot to talk about around that i think <laughs> I think we all get this um, every now and then when we get a bit overloaded and we're thinking, where am I? <laughs> oh, you're on a train and you're thinking, where, I am? where am I going? Again, I can't remember. Oh, you know, you're, there's, yeah, having there's to a lot, ferry from one place to the next. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of travelling and I do think that we need to be kinder to ourselves and I think we need to um, keep us kind of mental note of how much of this stuff we're doing, how much time we're spending getting to and from places um you know with certain sort of quality assurance work that I do if it's more than two hours away I, I won't do it because to yeah. me my time is precious and I don't mm -hmm. want to spend longer than that getting to somewhere yeah and getting back again at the end of the day yeah we don't always factor that in do we um it can be really difficult to take enough time before you say yes to something mm. to think actually is that worth the distance that I'm going to have to travel to do it and things like split, you end up with sort of split days and stuff if you're going somewhere and then, you know, you're wearing one hat and you're like, oh, I can do this thing in my other hat three hours later. But then actually, what do you do with that time? Yeah. You know, if you're cold, if you're hungry or whatever, all these things end up kind of adding up. Sometimes it can get a bit much and nine jobs for me was too much at yeah, so one, have you, one time. Have you sort of proactively looked to... To change that and slim that down you're not working nine jobs anymore yeah I have I looked I prioritized what was because some of it was you know that emotional energy thing again mm. and I don't think you realize at the time sometimes how much it's taking from you so I, I did really have a, a good close look at the things I was doing and tried to prioritize mm. and then also um I've always tried to have a bit of employed work as well so that you have that little bit of um, security, I, go, mm. I guess, going along underneath all the, all the um, worry and stress and risk. <laughs> and joy. <laughs> and joy. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, inter that's an interesting topic, actually. I think there are a lot of people who are doing part-time employed work and part-time freelance work, which... I did do for a while, but haven't done that for years now. And it maybe would be quite interesting to talk in more detail with somebody who's doing that because mm. I think there's a lot of questions that it brings up for people. You know, a lot of them around really boring tax return based stuff. But it yeah. is quite a specific kind of area, isn't it? Like when you end up with that kind of mixture of work on your plate. And it has taught me what I do want to do and what I don't want to do. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've come in, into contact with so many brilliant people that I can always sort of, there's usually somebody that I can pass work on to if I don't want to do it myself as well. Um, yeah, which is actually a nice thing to do. I've got a few people I know who do quite similar work to me in some some of the jobs that I get offered. And, you know, we pass work back and forward. And that's yeah. actually, I don't know why, but I have whenever someone asks me if I can do a piece of work, even if I don't want to or can't do it, I have this kind of, awful like urge to suggest someone or, yeah. or solve the problem for yeah, them and I yeah. don't know why because it's really not my yeah. problem if I can't do something but it is nice to be able to say oh there's this other person and you know chances are that will come back to you in fact I did it recently I was approached to run a particular workshop which I couldn't do just because the the date didn't work um and also it wasn't a great fee which it was a small charity who had a very small fee for the session and I said I do know someone who might be able to do it she's not local to here but if you're lucky she might be nearby on that day because she does you know travel here and it turned out she was and she did it because it was worth her while to tag it on to this other bit of work she was doing 
Um, and then just, I think it's karma to be honest, I got off at exactly the same workshop for a corporate client for three oh. times the fee. So <laughs> karma works your it way does. sometimes. <laughs> and I'm doing that one in a few weeks time. There is something, really nice. I do think there is something that said that has, there is for that kind of element of not necessarily luck, but fate and, and things moving you in a certain direction as well. Whether it's because you try stuff and you realise, oh, God, I don't want to do that again. Mm. Um, for me, that's working with very young children. Oh, I think I'm the same as you on that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I did that whole blagging it thing and got a job once. Um, I wrote a nativity for a primary <laughs> school <laughs> and then I went in and taught it to 90 Oh, Key stage one wow. and early years children, um, and I. That's where I learnt the uh, the meaning of the term code brown. Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> There's been a code brown says the learning <laughs> assistant. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think I do. I mean, it, it went really well, but it was it was. Oh, I earned my it's money. It's funny because all of every job comes with like it's downsides and I know you know you've talked to me about some of the stressful elements of working with sort of teenagers or whatever yeah. as well but you learn which downsides you can take yeah you, and which you can't <laughs> and that is yeah that's a nice thing about choosing what you can say yes to and what you might say no to yeah so. I was going to say also that I think I've always been a freelancer because um I can remember being a small child and obviously way too young to be able to do a, a, like a Saturday job or something like that and just thinking that life was incredibly unfair and um, what could I do to make money. So you've and always been an entrepreneur. I think so. I used mm. to, um, I could sew, so I used to make things, um, uh, little creatures, little mice, family of mice and things like that and take them to school and sell them to my friends. People and would buy a family of mice. They would and especially when I launched the catalogue Jenny, <laughs> there was a whole catalogue oh. of accessories you could get for your mouse so I got this whole thing going on <laughs> and I was at primary school when I did that and then as soon as I got old enough I got into, I got into magic and oh. I used to do, um, through doing, because I've got younger sisters, through doing parties party entertainment for my younger sisters I got booked <laughs> I used to get booked by their friends parents to do kids parties this so is an amazing freelance journey <laughs> I know I actually I found um, a diary from when I was 13 oh please read me a bit where I'd gone <laughs> I can remember it I'd gone I'd done a party and what I used to do is I used to do a magic show and a puppet show wow um and um, I think I got paid um, the princely sum of ten pounds for doing oh, this. Oh, so you were paid? Because I was, was going to say, you know, you should be careful, sort of. But I think undercutting the professionals, but you were charging for your time. I ten think pounds was probably quite a lot of money. It was. I, I, the mothers literally used to go, "Here's a room full of six-year-olds. Throw me in the room, shut the door, and then <laughs> retreat to the kitchen." I was thirteen, okay. and in my diary it says, uh, "Did a party today." Um, and on the way home, I brought a guinea pig. <laughs> and then it's got a sum where I've gone £10 minus £7 with the guinea pig equals £3 left. <laughs> God, so you were already at that stage thinking, is this £3 going to last me till Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah maybe, I was doing, maybe I was a bit of an entrepreneur as well. I'm not sure that I ever succeeded in making money, but I had this, I think I always wanted to sort of put creative ideas out there and share them with people because I had I used to collect <laughs> in the back of the TV guide they would always have an advert for like a decorative plate oh yeah and it was a big it was a circular image of a plate and I used yeah. to cut them out because I liked the circles yeah and I stuck them all around my bedroom and we had this we had these l-shaped bunk beds so underneath half of the top bunk there was like a space and I put like a fabric curtain across the front of it so and then I put all the cut out um Place wow! in there and it was called the great exhibition <laughs> exhibition or something and I did try to charge people to come to it but I'm not sure that anybody ever actually paid oh that's fantastic yeah. But, yeah, why have the real that thing as the beginning of sort of entrepreneurial that is but... that that is quite theatrical isn't it mm. yeah there we go <laughs> I'm going to quick fire some questions at you, which I've been asking okay. everybody. This section has a title now, but 
I'm thinking that because my last guest gave it a title. Okay. And I'm thinking uh, the next step is that I'm going to try and get somebody to make a jingle for it. Okay. But we'll just insert that whenever it's ready. So it's called From the Ridiculous to the Sublime. Okay. Not the most catchy, jingly-ish Okay. <laughs> I'm just thinking... Uh, Your composer hmm. brain can whir away. Um, but yeah, the first question is, what is the most annoying or ridiculous thing that you have had to do in the last week because of being a freelancer? I had to work out... Um, a song that I could use with a squeezy stress ball in my class for people with Parkinson's. Is that one of the sound effects uh, it, of the song? Uh, no, it's um, so it's kind of occupational therapy um, to get the participants Ooh. squeezing the ball. Okay. But I wanted to, I wanted a song <laughs> that would go with passing the ball from hand to hand and maybe throwing it in the air. Did it have to be a well-known song or were you writing it? Uh, no, it had to be a well-known song. Oh, God, so you're sitting there going through, like clicking yes. through every song you can think yep. of and seeing if it will work. So we ended up with, <laughs> she'll be coming round the mountain when she comes, yeah-hoo! And then, and that's so you, when you throw yeah, the ball up. that's when you throw it in the air. Amazing. How many songs did you have to go through before you <laughs> landed on that one as one that would work? And what were my family thinking as they heard me yeah. sitting? Because, um, of course, you're doing it at home. Trying you're doing these office. things out, yes. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. I've done that. Well, not that exact thing, but, yeah. Sit, sit and go through music. Like I was talking to someone this week, actually, about how stressful I find it um, because I'm using my own laptop or music collection for workshops if I ever need to just put background music on in workshops I feel so judged by whatever it is I yeah. choose you know I can't just kind of pop on iTunes you've got to sort of have a, a list that's you know acceptable music that you might not mind if was heard in yeah. public or if someone attributed it to you but it's so pressurizing to have to share your you know your personal it is kind yeah. of music collection with anybody try not to do that too often my ridiculous thing, I actually haven't got one from this week because I've recorded quite a few podcasts because I'm trying to get lots um, done uh, at the moment. So I've kind of run out of stories for this week. So I'm going back to one which I was reminded of this week because it's getting pretty chilly. Winter is definitely here. And I've got this little dilemma that I have in my house when I'm working from home about, oh, shall I put the heating on? Shall I, how, how long in the day can I go before I put the heating on? Because when you're working at home, you know, you could have it on all day, every day, because you kind of need it, because yeah. that's your, should be your workers' rights. Really, you're only in one room. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm lucky now in the sense that I live in a very small flat, and actually I could just stick the oven on and it will heat up the whole flat. So if I'm having <laughs> something for lunch, I'll just put it in there. Huddle you know. around the oven. Yeah, exactly. But it reminded me of when I used to live in a house share and it was a big old single glazed Victorian house and there were five of us living there and I was working from home. I was doing a kind of freelance admin role, which was sort of two, three days a week. And so often I'd be the only one there all day in the day. And you know what it's like when you're sharing with other people and you've got to share the bills, you can't help but think, well, you know, did I did I get my fair share of this energy that I'm paying for? And I'm sure people would have thought that if I'd have had the heating on sort of all day, every day. So I used to try not to use it. I had like a little portable heater that I could just, you know, stick on in the room I was in or something. And occasionally I would just think, oh God, this is ridiculous. Like, you know, it's my human rights, I'm putting it on. But you know, you're also thinking about, you know, global warming and what's happening. We're just sticking all this heating on in the house. So it becomes this massive dilemma in winter. And I actually, I used to... I, on a Monday, I used to work an evening shift on a box office yeah. for a few years. So I'd be doing sort of my admin stuff at home in the day. And then I'd go and do this evening shift on the box office. And I didn't have to leave until about five o'clock. But I remember there being a few days where by sort of three o'clock in the afternoon, I was so cold. I would just literally go and get <laughs> on the bus. because the, And also the place where I worked on the box office was quite cold as well. And I yeah. was thinking, God, where where and when am I going to get warm today? Yeah. So I would literally just go and I'd, I'd take a longer bus ride because the buses are really warm. Did you know which seats on the bus were nearest the heaters? Oh, the, one, oh, I, the ones near the engine. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would go and do, I'd genuinely go and do that just to be warm. Like I remember that being the warmest, nicest part of my day. Oh. That was a long time ago, and I'm happy to say that now when I work from home, well, I don't work from home that often because I have another space, which is great, but also when I do work from home, I just put the heating on. You've reached the lofty heights of allowing yourself to be warm every yeah. day. I, I, I think it's, you know, it's that kind of thing that ultimately 
drove me for a period of time drove me away from being willing to be a freelancer and then I came back and I I only came back at the point where I knew that I was kind of committed to being a bit nicer to myself yeah (laughs) I, I, I was I guess I was lucky in a sense because when I came back to freelancing I did it for a job for a con for a well-paid contract and I went okay I'm going to do that but it's all right I'm going to have a heating on I'm going to find a nice a nice other place to work from which I did and that's all been really good but I've now don't do that job anymore (laughs) but I'm now you know used to the certain standards of living of certain standards of warmth yeah and don't do that to myself anymore so that's that's a slightly nicer ending um second thing is what is the best thing that you've done this week or recently or the best thing that's happened to you because of being a freelancer um I had a lovely moment on Sunday I was running a workshop um a day a workshop day um called singing for health and um because I run all these different groups well all these different two groups um I just had really wanted to get um people singing together um, so I have the singing um, for Parkinson's group and then some of the unseen singers came together and then um, Pimlock Family Choir, some of the members from that um, who, you know, quite um, wide ranging in, in age and backgrounds and then um, just some other people who wanted to join and we all came together on Sunday and spent the whole day singing together. And as part of the day, we did a songwriting session where I had written a song about singing and <laughs> and I'd written the chorus but I wanted the verses to be written by the people in the in the workshop and there's about 30 people there and some were vis- visually impaired um some weren't able to hold a pen or write very easily so um in the end at lunchtime I went round with a great big bit of paper and um asked people what they felt about singing oh, amazing and um a lady came and said to me um she's she was a german lady she was quite elderly and she said um i really want to tell you um how i feel about today um which is a bit it's really difficult for me to um to 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 translate it into english and she said what i think i'm trying to say is it's really great to be able to just play yeah. As in play and have fun yeah, yeah. and, um, you know, not be self-conscious. She, she was saying, you know, even move your face into different expressions that you wouldn't normally make. And she said, um, sometimes I shout at my husband, but it's just not the same. <laughs> and Because we've been doing, because it's been Halloween this week, we've been doing Halloween soundscapes. So I've been saying, right, we need some evil expressions. We need yeah. zombie noises, all of that kind of thing. You just never get to do that in real life. No, now, and that was her point. She just said, you know, we stopped doing this stuff years and years ago. And where where is there that you can go and yeah. just play and yeah. and mess about and remember what it feels yeah. feels like? And those are the moments that make me think, this is why I do this. Yeah. And how lovely for you to be able to bring together all those different projects that you're very instrumental in making happen in yeah. the first place. Yeah. yeah. And why not? Yeah. Like, you can do that. Yeah, and it was, you know, and and we literally did write the verses of the song using the words of the people that were there. So, you know, and then they all sang it. So it was, you know, it was really meaningful. Yeah. Um, and that process panned out exactly how you kind of wanted it to, which is... I really happen. didn't know if it was going to happen <laughs> because um, we'd had all sorts of problems starting the workshop because there was traffic problems everywhere everyone was arriving at different times so we couldn't do any ice breaking and oh, no one knew each other and I was like I was my my whole Thinking, schedule had, <laughs> yeah had gone out the window like why did I bother even trying to write a schedule for the day yeah. and then just thinking all right I've got to do this and I had a wonderful wonderful volunteer who helped me for the day um called Hannah yeah and Hannah. I said at lunchtime I said right Hannah I'm going to try and do this songwriting thing. I don't know if it's going to work, um, yeah. but I'm, I'm going to need your help. And w- together we took everyone's words and in 15 minutes wow. <laughs> wrote this song in 15 minutes. Phew, and yeah. it worked and it was fine. Um, oh, well done. So, me. but I couldn't have done it without Hannah. She's yeah. great. Um, wordsmith as well. Yeah. So, 
Oh, that is so lovely. That yeah. makes my good thing that I've written down seem utterly trivial. Oh, and what was your pointless. good thing? But it's fine because it's completely different <laughs> to yours. Uh, my good thing about being a freelancer this week is that um, I had the flexibility to sort out a plumbing problem in my house. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Which, if I was stuck in a nine-to-five job, would probably there'd probably still be water coming through my ceiling. True. Um, but I not stuck in a nine-to-five job so although I don't normally choose to work from home I was able to say right I kind of need to work from home and I kind of need to move things about because this is an emergency that's mm. coming out and that is something that I've really really appreciated mm. about freelancing is like just anything you need to get done in your life there is so difficult to do things sometimes evenings and weekends yeah so actually if I go oh I could do this spreadsheet on an evening instead and that gives me you know Tuesday morning to phone a plumber yeah which is what I was doing <laughs> um and that just means that you know something which could have been an absolute nightmare has been sorted out yeah. in three days flat and you don't need to worry about I don't need it to worry about it anymore so yeah go freelancing <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> not quite as exciting no. as your I mean I didn't write a song with my plumber maybe I should have done well I mean <laughs> said, while you're here do you fancy doing something more creative <laughs> well I suppose in in the, in the longer term my freelancing allowed me when my son started school it allowed me to take him to school and pick him up every single day yeah he was only four you know they start them so young in reception now and um my employer before that you know was like oh what can we do to make you stay and I said well I want to be able to do that yeah you know can you help me do that no right okay I'm off and and I could do that and and I did you know plan my whole life and my schedule around that and he got that really good start and I didn't feel guilty um so yeah there's that flexibility isn't there yeah you can stay at home and get your parcels or your Tesco's delivery or whatever. <laughs> Sometimes just, yeah, it's what you need it in makes life. makes life simpler. Yeah. yeah. There's a whole other episode definitely about parenting and those of us who aren't parents who are like, oh, yeah, that would be fine. I could have a kid on one arm and be doing my work with the other arm, which and then from some parents who I've spoken to, it sounds like maybe that's not true. But, um, yeah, I'll be chatting with some, some new parents hopefully quite soon uh, about their experience of you know, bringing up baby while while freelancing and seeing how that's panning out for them yeah well there's a whole um movement now isn't there for parents and performing performing arts yes and mothers mm. who make mm. all the all the alliterative movements <laughs> we'll be exploring them in some future episode <laughs> thank you so much for chatting with me amy it's, it's been, been lovely, lovely. It's a really nice catch up and yeah keep freelancing yeah keep on wearing your hats because you look fab thanks you too <laughs> Bye. Bye. You've been listening to Probably Freelance with Jenny Elborn and my guest was Amy Mallett. My theme music is by Sarah Wyler and the podcast is supported by Impact Hub Brixton. Yeah. <laughs> Code brown. I know. Oh, no. Oh, wait, I'll definitely edit this out, but that's actually the second conversation I've had today about Code Brown. Really? <laughs> yeah, because the job I was doing today was they're working on a kid on a show for like very small children. Oh. And they were reminiscing about previous shows they've done where, yeah, apparently somebody just did a poo on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Never work with children and animals, isn't it? <laughs>